18 engineers, is what we're told, has been appointed by ESCOM uh, from Solidarity's list of 300 skilled engineers. In August, the union sent the list of what it calls the country's top power experts to ESCOM and public enterprises. ESCOM says a digital crowdsourcing tool will be developed to allow people to submit their expertise. But there are still calls for the power utility CEO, Arne De Reiter, of course, to make the process more inclusive. Let's discuss this a bit further with Solidarity spokesperson uh, Mornay Milan joining us. Mornay, good to have you back on uh, ENCA. So it looks like the list of 18 has gone through as well. 18 people, though, uh, how much of a difference is this really going to make in the end? Uh, look, we've been incredibly disappointed uh, with the fact that there has only been 18 appointments. Um, you know, this is a process, the skills shortage, the shortage of expertise, the shortage of knowledge, the shortage of experience, it's it's something that has plagued ESCOM for quite some time now. We have, for example, been involved uh, with regard to the skills shortage at ESCOM since at least 2019. So, unfortunately, uh, we have had these lists in the past, and it took until stage six load shedding threatened in July of this year uh, before the Minister of Public Enterprises, Papua New Guinea, finally took us up on the offer and finally accepted our help and decided to appoint uh, some of these individuals or decided to take the, the list at least. Uh, unfortunately, we've seen that characterize the current process as well. Um, it's just a lack of urgency a lack mm. of political will on the part of ESCOM, and at the moment we just simply can't afford it. No, we, we can't afford it, and I'm curious to know what was wrong with the other 282 skilled engineers. I would have imagined ESCOM would take everybody that they possibly can with a semi-decent CV and, and get them on the job as quickly as possible. Uh, Mornay, what can you tell us about these 18 engineers that are, are now being brought into ESCOM? Uh, what kind of level of expertise are we talking about here? Uh, look, unfortunately, we're not involved with in the appointment process itself, so I don't have any information regarding the 18 individuals that were appointed by ESCOM. Uh, that's now in ESCOM's hands. Uh, mm. I can talk to uh, talk about the list more generally. Sure. Uh, of those 300 individuals uh, who were on the list, they had amongst them over 400 accredited qualifications, 14 of which uh, were PhDs, a cumulative 5,500 years of experience. So these really were the absolute best of the best with regard to the energy sector in South Africa. Uh, so that's good news, at least. Uh, the qualifications, I think, is what people are looking for, the expertise. We can't just keep on uh, using the same process, banging our heads against the wall, uh, wanting a different outcome. I'm sure someone called that the uh, definition of insanity. So why is there a call to make this more inclusive? What do we mean by more inclusive? Surely we can't be fussy at this point. If you've got an engineering degree, if you've got a PhD in engineering, we need you, we want you, go work for ESCOM. Why are we complicating it by trying to be more inclusive now as well? Uh, look, from our perspective, we have absolutely no idea uh, why ESCOM is looking to clog up the process even further. Mm. Uh, look, from our perspective, our list, we had no other, we only had two criteria upon which we judged who, uh, who deserves to be on the list. We sat with some of the top experts in energy in South Africa and we developed this list. The only things we were looking for were skills and a willingness and <laughs> eagerness to help. So we didn't have any other qualifications, either demographic or with regard to gender or anything like that. Uh, we simply can't afford to have other agendas at the moment. We can't placate certain political um, pet projects. We can't you know, <laughs> work with interest groups uh, simply to appease them. We have to now just fix the crisis as soon as possible. Well, that's what I was going to say. Uh, it almost sounds like this is becoming a bit of a, an internal political issue uh, once again, which ESCOM has been accused of many, many times. Ted Blom, I'm sure you'll know Ted Blom, often on ENCA and other channels saying it's the political interference which is causing uh, a problem right now. So then, Amone, I know we can't talk about ESCOM, so let's bring it back to solidarity. So we still have this list of two, is my maths right, 282 engineers, is that right, uh, available as well. What are you telling the president today? Because they're going to have this cabinet meeting. I'm assuming all the big wigs are going to be there. I pray their power is on so they can have these Zoom sessions. What do you tell the president? The people are here. The experts are here. You've got them, but they're not taking them. What's your call to the president? Look, um, just let everything else on the side. You've got the plan. You've got the solutions. You've got a list of the absolute best of the best. 
it's not, we're not in a situation where we have to come up with solutions. We have the solutions. We now just have to implement them. Appoint these experts as soon as possible. Uh, remove all the barriers uh, that are currently hindering uh, private producers, private independent power producers from operating, you know, prioritize criminal cases against saboteurs at ESCOM and simply make the management at ESCOM allow them to operate without having all this political influence. It's really not difficult stuff. We just have mm. to muster up the urgency and muster up the political will to finally do this because it's not a complicated issue. It's simply an issue of getting it done. I think the entire country couldn't have said it better if they tried. Solidarity spokesperson uh, Mornay Milan, 18 engineers from Solidarity's list. <coughs> Excuse me, I am battling a bit of a cold. From Solidarity's list of 300 skilled engineers. So that cabinet meeting happening today, and as Mornay quite rightly says, it's not complicated. The skills are there. Just bring them into ESCOM. We keep saying there's a skill shortage, that we need highly qualified people. And according to Solidarity's list, we have people there with PhDs, over 5,000 hours of collective knowledge, sitting, waiting. So we're wondering what's going to actually happen with this cabinet meeting that is expected to discuss this electricity crisis later today. But